trying to enter the botanical garden, you have to go through me. What's up everybody, hope you are doing well. Today we have a very special Lego set review for you all. This is the brand spanking new hot off the press, rushed over here so quickly, Lego Ideas set number 21353, The Botanical Garden. This is the 61st such set in the Lego Ideas program. This program is typically an adult fan of Lego's dream. You design a concept for a set, it garners some popularity, sufficient support gets it to LEGO's reviewing team, and if they approve it, if it gets their support, this thing is going to be a set and the designer is going to receive some royalty. Now interestingly, LEGO has previously released a much smaller scale botanical garden, and part of the reason I did get this, despite having that set, was not only to supplement that, but to also create a morphed design. Now this 3,792 piece count for the most part is a very decent value for the price. And to sweeten the deal, Lego has offered not only one, but two GWPs or gift with purchase to early buyers of this set. Because who doesn't love free Lego, right? So if you bought any set, I believe over $130, you got the Books Are My Passion idea set which is another realized design and those who specifically got the set are going to get the gatekeeper as well the entrance gate which will give you an additional minifig and another 152 pieces since lego essentially gifted us this bonus i'm going to be gifting you all with coverage relating to this gwp as well especially as it ties to the set now lego's emphasis on botanicals Flowers, gardening, etc. have really taken off in the most recent years. Probably a very good idea that was trialed that became so popular that LEGO had to keep producing sets. And I'm really thrilled to see that actually we're getting a diverse parts palette. We're getting all these creative sets with nice recolored elements, new molds, etc. And this really is icing on the cake and actually a nice extension of this category to your LEGO city. It's going to be a natural fit. Now, for the past couple years, LEGO has had an increased focus on botanicals and gardening and plants and all that fun stuff. Partly, I would say, due to their sustainability missions with the Plants from Plants theming, but also because I'm guessing the adult audience, they did their marketing homework. They have really resonated well with these sets and the excellent part selections that come with these sets, as well as just the creativity and the visuals of these, uh, gave these a very nice stay in LEGO's portfolio. And it's actually really neat that they're extending this to a city-like landscape. This popularity is actually even affected in the Greater Florida LEGO Users Group being commissioned to build flowers for an Art Basel event in Miami Beach last year. We built over 250 sets for the W South Beaches lego activation very low-key project we were not supposed to tell anybody about it until it happened but we did it and that was a fun blast and that love that newfound love continues on with sets like this as well as other products that lego will be offering through the new year but enough talking let's actually build these sets and share our final thoughts starting with the entrance gates <laughs>
like and my gosh this thing is huge like talk about massive now a typical minifix scale building would have a single story and pretty much where that door is because let's say you have a couple bricks give or take for other fixtures netting the height to be around here but the first floor is one and a half times that and then this skylight and really the catwalk up there makes for like a second floor structure which just makes this thing rather massive and equally massive are the roster of minifigs included in this set so many that i had to even expand my brickle backdrop to accommodate all 12. now you see 13 on here so i actually got the whole group including the gwp minifig this woman groundskeeper over there to make it a full whopping 13 minifigs and one of them has a dog to his name I believe it is this one right here two very key minifigs come to mind the one on the pedestal with the short hair is the actual brains behind this botanical garden project italian lego fan valentina bima her backstory is on the instruction booklet which is also available as a free pdf download as usual on lego.com you can read the backstory there the set's senior designer chris mcveigh is the one with the camera very nicely captured in this set and lego made a very classy touch by including a visually impaired minifig with the appropriate walking aid in the back with some very nice emotions being represented taking in the sights and the aromas of the botanical garden the remaining group of minifigs represent a very nice museum going crowd and their expressions surely attest to their characterized enjoyment of the very elegant grounds aside from the puppy there is a bunny having some grass for lunch and if we turn this model around to the back we see a squirrel dumpster diving but not only do we have the squirrel and the bunny there are a group of birds scattered throughout the model in various places doing various bird tasks which add a lot of depth and character to these scenes the backstory of botanical gardens is well explained in lego's instruction booklet and the various species that we build throughout the build process are shown in this page which is page number 10 of the pdf version you can see eucalyptus tree coffee arabica plant acer palmatum tree at the front several tulips a lot of plants with their scientific latin based names and with these newly built and newly ideated species come new molds which are actually rare with lego ideas sets as these are supposed to be using the existing palette brand new rosebud designs are used for the various plants up front and also inside the build and we get some nice tulips rounding out the model in various spots they come in multiple colors and add a lot of vibrance to the set now we get to truly rejoice in the fact that this set is complete on all four corners filling a very deep and noticeable void left by another certain set and that is none other than the 2023 lego friends botanical garden which i already started plucking a few elements out of but is mostly complete and seen here alongside the 2024 lego ideas model and interestingly part count wise this has a little bit over a quarter of the pieces and retails for just under a quarter of the price of this set so you're probably getting a little bit better value by buying this set however you really cannot beat this one in fact i can attest that the building experience was very similar with this one in terms of sequencing you built some exterior details first the actual pond with the lily pads here and then slowly got the interior going added some trees some species there was some context in the book and then you finished with the fountain and the cherry blossom tree as seen here similarly the fountain and the red tree on the left were the final submodels of this build bag number 29 and the color scheme was largely similar 
to the 2024 version with bright green grass outlining the bottom, white facade, sand green windows. However, they used light nougat as the beige accent color while reverting to tan for the 2024 version. Which Lego denoted was the preferred color combination to be used in this set. You do see traces of the medium nougat on the ground as perhaps some of this like paver material lining the side of the building. And very much hidden from the front of the building is the dark tan base using masonry bricks, studs not on top tiles, among other techniques. So let's take a pretty good look at the exterior and interior details of the Lego Ideas Botanical Garden. So starting from the front, we will first look at the Acer Palmatum tree, which is actually the second to last thing that you build in the set. In fall color, it comes with some nice dark red weeds, nice tubular detail, and is actually similar in structure to the cherry blossom that was in the Lego Friends version. However, because of the lack of contrast in the color, it was a little hard to track the build at first, but once I did one or two of some iterative leaf sections, it became pretty easy after that. The base is a very nice effective use of round white pieces and suits the model pretty well. Several rosebuds in lavender and pink line the front of the garden in full symmetric display with the other side. So as you can see, I have rearranged the minifigs to offer a bit of a storytelling element to this review. You can see this worker here manicuring the tulips on the left, and you can see the set designer minifig taking a photo of a man and his dog. And the brains behind the project, Valentina Bima, acting as a host to the botanical garden. Older gentleman taking a leisurely stroll. Let me turn this so the light starts to favor him and another worker examining and doing some leaf blowing. I was about to say reef blowing, if you get the reference there, on the foliage around the area. The fountain here is actually the absolute last thing that you build, perhaps one of the most simplest in terms of the set. That's a very nice, effective design and use of these round dome pieces. However, I will have to say that I do like the one from the Lego Friends version a little bit better. But that's because the water is portrayed to be more kinetic. These ice cream tulips are shown here on the right, looking pretty sharp. And the yellow tulips back here with some side cover and a wrought iron gate. As kind of teased with the squirrel earlier on, the back has its own share of details. Some tools for the gardeners and the workers here, as well as a hose leaking water out. And coming around, the details are actually fairly straightforward. You do see a bit of a repetitive design here, more standard. But this is what it takes to have a complete facade on all four sides. And actually back here, we will reveal later on what's inside. But you get kind of a glimpse outside as a gentleman is sitting and chatting on a smartphone while enjoying a dessert from the cafe inside. To kind of spice up the build, LEGO included two lampposts on the side, symmetrically placed, as you see here, using very standard technique to attach to the side of the wall. So for those wishing to add a little fun to the set, it does come apart in several sections. The glass skylight breaks apart into two sections. However, I will just remove the whole sky dome so we can reveal the interior. Lots of detail here alone. But as you get through the middle stages of the set, you fill out the sides of the building as well. And this comes apart in a very unique way. In a way that makes this consistent with the typical Lego play sets, which leave the back open, you get to remove at least one sidewall, which is actually identical on the other side, built in a pair to reveal the interiors that correspond to each side. On this right side is the coffee shop, as you see here very simplistic but effective cafe design with an espresso machine back there i can add another espresso machine design to the list of designs built in lego sets and on the left is actually more the business end of this the arid zone which we will zoom into in more detail as we get through the interior details of the set and this actually got me as you might see in the speed build i thought i was going to be doing a left side wall for a second not realizing that i actually did the right side not realizing that actually the right side walls were left empty. Upon entry into the botanical garden, we find the admission desk where they 
process the tickets to come into the place, perhaps make some last minute on-site sales, and also distribute the ear devices for perhaps assistive listening, which is a feature often seen in museums and gardens alike. And if you want to dig even deeper, these two trees do come off individually. In fact, they even denote by color coding it which slot these trees go into. Red for the right side for this coconut-like palm tree, and for the eucalyptus tree, they choose a teal color coding. So it's nice to actually have a teal two by two brick. And you can see there's a pretty deep slit that allows for this to be placed in so that there is no mistaking the placement of these trees. It'll also allow them to clear the vertical clearance needed to fit the skylight roof. All of the plants that are described in the instruction booklet and elsewhere are shown here scattered around the botanical garden. Interestingly, the interior architecture feels so 1990s Epcot Center. It feels like you're in the Wonders of Life Pavilion combined with the land with that dark tan, light tan, dual color coating. The tile work has a very familiar pattern which AFOLs, including myself, have used in other mocks, whereas we straddle these one by one tiles at an angle to create this nice multicolored effect. Now, the use of regular tan, while cool and while appropriate for the set, I felt to be a little bit underwhelming. I was hoping for a surprise that maybe they would use one of the newer shades of tan that are out there, uh, perhaps warm tan, like in the Mona Lisa set, to lay out the floor and add an incentive for the collectors to get this. However, the use of tan is always welcome. It's a very nice earth tone and it fits the interior landscape perfectly. You can see some what appear to be mushrooms on the right and some very well-crafted plants throughout the interior. Lots going on, but it's actually a good abundance of detail. Everything rests on these very meticulously built brown plate beds with lots of studs sticking out. It can be quite a challenge to keep up with the demands of the instructions, but it works rather effectively. And on the back side here, there is a second floor catwalk, which allows you to observe some of these species from above. Some ventilation grills, and really these are supposed to be signs for the cafe and for the arid zone, offer additional layers of detail lining up the interior walls. So really these walls are not bland. The centerpiece plants are the eucalyptus pausiflora and the phoenix duck and these are probably some of the coolest plants I've ever built with Lego as usual and characteristic with these late era botanical sets heavy use of Lego Technic heavy use of snot heavy use of anti studs really neat techniques and I do love this leaves from the Phoenix and I plan to adapt this to perhaps even future palm tree designs the inclusion of the bamboo and sand green is really nice as well and I'm starting to really warm up to using sand green as a foliage color. The cafe shown here is not as extensive as other cafes, such as the recently reviewed Lego Friends Cafe that came out three months ago, but has the necessary amount of detail, point of sale, pastry case down here, which I'll try to like maybe pop out for a second. As you can see, some cookies and donuts hanging there, a point of sale and a small little display case for the cake. Put this back in. Barista pretty much stands in place, takes the order and makes it for the customer on the spot. And an up close look at the espresso machine is back here. As a nice added detail, the designers have placed a garland pair right on top of the espresso bar, which adds to the theming and makes it feel like an actual botanical garden cafe. Being in Miami, if you've been to Pinecrest Gardens, this feels very reminiscent of the what was once Juan Valdez Cafe that had residency in the uh, main visitors area. The menu graphic there is printed and you can see the wrought iron stair rails. Very nice use of this tailpiece, which I believe comes from themes like Lego elves and dreams. There are many of these placed throughout the set and these are in some of the other sets offered over the past year as well. You can see some outside also. 
Here we find what we call the arid zone, which contain plants that grow in drier climates like cacti, and they use a lot of Lego Technic elements, pieces actually from other botanical sets make reappearances, and the rosebuds appear in green to make and simulate these dried plants. Actually, the most impressive use was the squash plant piece in green to represent the bottom of that one. Not exactly sure the name of these species. Another detail that's pertinent to the aridity of these uh, plants are the use of grills, perhaps as ventilation, to perhaps dehumidify this section of the uh, botanical garden. That way these plants can continue to thrive in this area. For what is a rather small section, this is actually very well packed with detail and building this was rather fun. The same interior design features, a two-tone tan barrier, and one of several of the labels here are present in the arid zone, as well as the nice stair detail to get you back into the main lobby. This right here would be the analog in the LEGO Friends version, which is equally packed with detail. A little bit more colorful, I would say. Maybe that's intentional, but equally pretty cool and should I plan to make some modifications to the ideas version, I would like to actually integrate and incorporate these species as well. And while we're at it, as another point of reference, these are the main plants that you find inside the Lego Friends version. A different collection, but a rather vibrant one and also very nice. Let me know which collection you like better. Do you like the one in the Lego Friends set better or do you like the one in the idea set better? I'm sure not everybody would actually prefer the ideas ones solidly. And a couple more details are in this skylight unit, which include a bird on a nest and some lights. If you really want, you can actually switch this with the coffee shop. However, I do believe the lights are here for a purpose, and that is to showcase the plants on the side of the garden. Now we're ready to actually talk about the build features of this set. And putting this back, I will note that it is preferable to put the middle section before putting in either of the corners uh, because it tends to be a pretty tight squeeze from my experience putting the middle back in when the other two are already out there. The build process of the botanical garden took me somewhere between seven to eight hours over separate sittings with lots of breaks in between coming in at 3,800 pieces. Of course, you're not gonna get this thing done in seconds. And this build was overall very enjoyable. I loved it from start to finish, but there were as usual a couple of quirks that made keeping things in place rather challenging. And this is a common thing when you're dealing with botanicals and dealing with unorthodox building techniques, pin and bar adjustments, whatnot especially with these plants. These plants can drive you nuts as they use a new system of um, attaching them and interlocking them. They use smaller pin style attachments for these plants. The new rose buds also use smaller attachments. So getting them in place can take a few extra seconds, as, such as also the case with these tulips. Actually, the most challenging thing to keep together is the eucalyptus tree shown here. Uh, the dark tan seaweed elements that are beneath the bamboo are not very clutch with the arms that hold them in place. So they do fall off and you might have to be very careful attaching them back. And very likely, if you're messing with anything inside this center structure here, let's lift it to show it again a lot of these other plants will be very prone to falling off and it has happened on several occasions. Not to mention these stalks are rather loose in place. So if you're transporting this, just be mindful to protect your lavender rosebuds as you move them around. If you want my brutally honest opinion, these techniques are very nice. The accents are very nice, but actually it is not too challenging to put these on in the building. So that's actually a nice opportunity for folks to get into the hobby and not feel intimidated by the challenges. This actually carries on simple yet effective and all of the challenges are actually present on the plants inside and outside the building. But as usual, and this was experienced when building the boutique hotel, the candlestick supports while an excellent detail are not 
the most stable when it comes to adding the top pieces here as the little pin on top of the candlestick does not interlock very well with the one by one round plate. So you just have to be careful doing that and then try to place the assembly of the one by one round plate and the one by two round plate simultaneous while mounting the candlestick on and it'll be just fine. It becomes abundantly clear as you build this model that you will encounter some repetition. So you're going to be getting used to some of these techniques. And by the end of the build, you will probably be able to reproduce these from memory, especially the right side if you were given the bag of bricks and no instructions. So that was a cool result of building this. I got used to the actual style and parts usage that is characteristic to this. And... Um, memorized the window arrangements, knew when to build two or three windows high per each bag um, and what sections they corresponded to. The repetition carries over to the sides and the top. The building is laced by symmetry throughout, which actually enables you to speed up the build, even though some folks do like to take their time. Very valid. I love enjoying it and slowing down, decompressing, really enjoying it. But I'm also a pretty speedy builder. It is the monotony that gives the building its very elegant visual look. But some parts can be a little bit annoying, like placing these hearts in the perfect pattern as shown here. Probably the most annoying part of building the top of the botanical garden. Something I truly miss because of building other sets that did not provide for such an opportunity was the heavy use of basic bricks and building it like a classic town set. You're building this thing in sections, in modular sections, in vertical sections, and they're going to all interlock at the top. But what was cool is that each section just had its stack of basic bricks, a lot of familiar techniques that felt like callbacks to older sets like the Lego City Airport, Lego City Fire Stations, and other stuff that came back in the 90s. The brick usage felt about as heavy as then. No shortcuts single high basic bricks for the most part with a couple of one by two by three and one by one by threes to support the sides here but it just felt like a classic timeless build experience that adult fans of lego will truly enjoy on the note of being like the classic city sets to have two 32 by 32 base plates in this set was truly a nice feature it's like it felt like a gift uh, because Lego has, of course, reduced the usage of these base plates, completely eliminating it from Lego City sets, limiting it to special releases like Marvel sets, modular buildings, and icon sets, as well as idea sets just like this. So it was nice that they gave us not one, but two 32x32s in bright green, let alone. On another note, all of these glass elements and actually these curved slope elements are in fact new molds. Currently exclusive to the set, I wouldn't be surprised if LEGO incorporates some or all of these in other sets going down the line. It is a neat touch, a neat effort that LEGO actually provided these larger glass pieces in separate bags. However, this didn't seem to free the problem of scratches being present as there are still a trace of scratches on the corner and linear units as you can kind of see as I shine the light on this skylight here it didn't outright eliminate the problem but it certainly must have reduced it as another fan lusting for classic lego i do like the fact that this feels very paradisa like in fact on the original design the much taller glass domes were used that did come from sets like the breezewood cafe and some of these other paradisa 90s era sets so nice update to that especially for the set the use of banana peels in bright green, noticeably a different plastic material, was a nice detail for this set. I know these are probably Super Mario Brothers parts, if I had to guess. Nicely adapted to a botanicals themed set. And overall, if I had to describe the parts palette for the set in terms of culinary terms, I would say it is certainly mouthwatering. You get a lot of large white plate, White basic bricks, white plates, tan plates, dark tan plates, especially dark tan plates, and brown elements, all in just massive quantities. Should you wish to part this set out, 
they will be very well positioned to be used in other builds. And these glass domes are definitely setting off light bulbs in my brain for future ideas. However, I will talk about a specific target idea that actually will incorporate the other botanical garden in just a moment. It is really neat to note that the adjoining gift with purchase, the entrance gate, is largely compatible, very similar to the botanical garden itself. However, it uses traditional Lego plates instead of the 32 by 32 base plates. So you will have a little bit of a step down here as you go from the entrance gate to the main model. But other than that, it is extremely cohesive and complements and suits the model very well. It also comes with a to-go cup, probably hinting at that connection with the cafe that you would just take the coffee to go instead of drinking the provided glasses. The gate also comes with a butterfly and actually emphasizes the use of these gem pieces as outside lighting. These horn pieces are also used pretty predominantly throughout the set as detailed accents, similar to another creative use, much like as a door handle in the Lego City Harbor that came out earlier this year. I just love this piece and hope to adapt it to other uses as well. So I think adult fans of LEGO, while finding some of the techniques familiar uh, from their past experiences with a healthy dose of snot and regular vertical building techniques, will truly enjoy this and find great value in building this. Not everything has to be an impressive snot set and really the techniques best show themselves through the plants that actually use them. A very subtle minifig detail that I did like about this set is that the placement of jumpers at various locations throughout the exterior and the interior of this building. It's very difficult to actually get minifix to stand upright on a tiled surface, so having these jumper elements and limited stud elements mixed in actually benefit the set in that respect that you're able to stage these uh, visuals and not worry about minifix falling off and having to pick through to put them back up. So it's not necessarily what one may think to be maybe a cost-saving measure or none of that. It affords the fidelity of having these nice detailed and textured floors, as well as the ability to display the minifigs and pets in their appropriate environments. And this is where I use the Generation Z TIL acronym. Today I learned to realize that these very short, skinny stalks that came in like the succulent set as part of the cacti and appear on the pick a brick wall in brown without any demonstrated purpose other than appearing to be like antlers for a reindeer, serve as an actual flower stalk that supports these smaller tubed flowers. The more you know, right? And the only thing really left to talk about for this set specifically is the value. So this came in with a $330 price tag, which initially when building this, I thought it was a little bit steep. Uh, there's a bit of a caveat. Parts are getting smaller in general, so you see a large part count. You're kind of deceived because you're getting a lot of these small plants. But overall, after encountering all of the pieces that this set has, if you average it with these larger elements, you do find that somewhere between $300 and $330 is a fair price to ask, especially when comparing this with a modular of a similar size. This certainly has the volume of a larger modular, although not the height, clearly. But even though it is a single to two story uh, complex, the actual roof height does almost put this up there with a three story modular. So you're getting pretty good value overall. Now I would, if it were up to me, my recommendation would be to price this at $300. But even at the 329, getting the GWP of this entrance, as well as the bookshelf GWP made for some decent value. So for fellow adult fans of Lego, my recommendation would be a big yes to get this set. Definitely recommend it. City builders will love this. Those who are really in need of this joining the module line might be disappointed. I noticed that the original design by Valentina Bima does have the modular standard and this doesn't, however, 
really there shouldn't be a strict requirement for this to be able to adjoin. I think this will go just fine next to it and you can always compensate for any differences in the terrain profile between this and the neighboring modulars accordingly. Now do note that the sidewalk here at the front will line up with the same height as a typical modular building but most eightfolds will probably take convenience nowadays in adapting this to the brand new mills standard and i have an example of a mill standard on this channel so we talked about the past the design and ideation of this lego idea set the present the building of this lego idea set and reviewing it and now with our old pal the lego friends botanical garden we're going to talk about the future what's going to happen next so naturally i would like to morph these two together to create something large originally it was going to probably take multiple copies of the lego friends botanical garden but this came along with a much more complete package. I don't think it will look exactly like this, and I think there'll be actually some substantial changes, but I have a few ideas that I wanna bring together and bring to light. With so many exterior and interior details, the possibilities are really endless what can be done, and we can take strengths that were present here and not in the LEGO Friends version, and mix them with features that were present here and not in the lego ideas version to make one massive super botanical garden so definitely be on the lookout and stay tuned for when i get after this project probably will be in the near term and now for the closing thoughts especially for the too long didn't read too long didn't watch long story short folks this is a fantastic set a really enjoyable build nice pairing with the entrance gate fun 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 very vibrant, very colorful. Everything felt right building this. This felt like a classic set mixed with new techniques and new advances in Lego's palette that make this really enjoyable, especially for longtime Lego enthusiasts that crave the classic product that Lego offered in days gone by. Yet, holy cow, look at the details, right? This is just fantastic, very vibrant, very aesthetically pleasing and well-placed definitely a must have for lego city collectors very easy to incorporate into a modular town the sidewalks will match up only thing is you don't have the pins but you don't need the pins this is just a natural fit and personally for me the start of probably a massive project that will be in the works next year feel free to share your thoughts i want to know what you think about the set whether you'll join me in having this and other than that, just stay tuned for future projects, future videos on more sets and many, many mocks that I have lined up. But of course, to stay tuned, you gotta make sure you subscribe to this channel. And while you're at it, feel free to leave a like and share any other thoughts that you have on this set or on this review. From HQ, where the aroma of the flowers just rages high in the botanical garden. Thanks again for watching. This is Dr. Tolga. Out.